Hello. My video took a second. Welcome back. It's Wednesday. We're so excited to be buzzing with you. Come on, dance, guys. All right. Anyway, hello. You're all going to kill me. We're still drinking our coffee. <laughs> I didn't warn anyone about a dance party. So we're the PRH Library Marketing Team. I'm Jen Rubin, and we are so excited. We brought the coffee. I am so revved up. I have iced coffee and hot coffee today. Just in case I ran out of one, I needed a backup. I also have water, and brownies are like behind my computer screen. <laughs> but I think that might be embarrassing to eat, so I'll wait till this is over. <laughs> this will be my reward. The hashtag is PRH Morning Buzz. Um, we are definitely buzzed on the coffee, or at least I am. I have new glasses this week too, guys. So this represents Ooh. my current state. I had the hearts, and I was like, this is what quarantine's doing to us. We're all <laughs> monkeying around. So let's get going and introduce our fabulous panel today. Um, but before we do, I want to go over the key. I tricked you. <laughs> um, the key is hardcover is HC, TR, trade paperback. LP is large print, ebook. I, I can't not make fun of this one. It's an electronic book. Um, we have our new big E symbol in orange. So that tells you that the E galley is available. Please let us know if you would like to check that out um, so that you can make your purchasing decisions or just enjoy some of these fabulous reads we're going to talk about. AD is audio download and CD is compact disc. And now we'll introduce our fabulous panel. Like I said, I'm Jennifer Rubin. Take it away. Hi. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Fabian. Great to be here again. Hi, I'm Jennifer Childs, or Jen. Hi, everybody. I'm Erica Melnichuk. Uh, hey, Jen, I'm debuting my new travel mug. Look, there are lobsters. <gasps> oh, my gosh, I love it. It hasn't seen a day of Metro North yet here in Connecticut, but it sees a lot of time from my kitchen to my office. I love it. Nice. Jen, we lost your visual. Are you hiding from us? <laughs> Probably. Yes. <laughs> I'm here. Thank okay. you. Oh, for, there she is. We like to have these dramatic moments. Spontaneously stopped showing me. <laughs> because you yeah. dared to call yourself yeah. Jennifer, not Jen. I think so. Oh, I yeah. think so. I have my Penguin uh, Jane Eyre coffee mug today. Oh, perfect. Elizabeth, do you have any beverages on hand? No, I, I just have water. I had, to, I had to have my tea at the first moment I woke up. So. Okay. I'm ready we'll, to we'll go. We'll allow it. <laughs> So we have something exciting to talk about. Yes, um, and I'm going to talk about it. So I hope you are all aware of our patron-facing website, which is borrowreadrepeat.com. Uh, that's where we um, espouse the benefits of borrowing from the library, from supporting your local library. And we reach out with reading recommendations to library patrons um, you know, all over the country. It's been very successful, and with the success of our morning buzz, we decided that we're going to uh, host our first patron book recommendation webinar next Friday, the 15th, um, because we're not on the air enough. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it's going to be a little different in that we're really going to focus on books that are already out. Uh, we'll focus on books perfect for virtual book clubs, summer reads. Um, so we already have a great um, sign-up. We started promoting it in our e newsletter last week, but we hope you would share with your patrons if possible. Um, we have, we'll have provide a registration link and some social media images in the wrap-up for you to share. Um, and of course, you're welcome to join us too if you just can't get enough of us. Uh, if you need one more dose of um, our smiling faces and book talks, you're welcome to join. Um, I see Jen's new glasses. New glasses. <laughs> We need to all get on the glasses game, guys. Yeah. <laughs> all right, next week for sure. Thank you. Uh, but you know, this will be more focused for um, patrons, directing them to you know borrow digitally from their library, um, should that be their only option. And um, we hope um, hope you'll support us. So it's so incredible um, how many virtual opportunities are being created to connect books and authors with readers every day during this time of social distancing. Uh, Penguin Random House has been continuously compiling virtual book events, author Q&As, 
and so much more that's happening on a variety of social platforms uh, each week. They archive everything too, so you can go back and watch an author of interest if you missed the live stream. Um, I just went back over this weekend to that great conversation between Stephen King and uh, John Grisham. Oh, I just, I was starstruck, but they felt like they were, well, they were in my living room with me. Um, so See, we finally, Erica, yeah. you've been waiting yeah. to be in the room with Stephen King. <laughs> Stephen King, as a main girl, Stephen King and I are meant to meet in this book world someday. Um, I do know his high school librarian uh, in South <gasps> Portland. Wow. Well, six degrees of separation. Um, so it's just a great reminder how books do connect us um, each and every day. So this is a great place uh, and resource for you and your patrons to uh, check out our authors. No? Oh my gosh! In honor of Cinco de Mayo, that was yesterday. Oh. Our sound effect today. <laughs> Are you guys ready for a pop quiz? Let's do this again. I love that I had to write. Oh. It's fun in the header in case you were trying it. I'm telling you. We are surprised every time by this, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, it's fun. Up, oh, Jen hit away, away again. <laughs> then you disappeared. Back to back. Flavor. Just like a delinquent student, you're like, I am hiding oh, from the pop quiz. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> During the pop quiz. Okay. So, mixing it up in my purple hat. This is actually my toddler's hat. It's very small. It doesn't fit on my head, but it's the perfect size for a pop quiz. <laughs> so, Erica, I'm going to oh, start with yeah. you. Okay. I feel like I haven't seen your face in a while, and I want to learn more about what you today. What have you got? Today. What have you got? <laughs> Would you want to narrate your story on audio? Ooh. Oh, that's a good one. Um <laughs> Well, you know what, I have um, I was just recently reminded um, about Kate Winslet. I would choose Kate Winslet because I saw her, um, I saw her read on Instagram on that um, Instagram account, Saving with Stories, I think it's called. Oh, yeah. And I didn't even invite my children to join me. I just sat and listened to her read <laughs> because I love, I love Kate Winslet a lot. So if she were to be me in, a, in an audio book. That would be amazing. I love that. You know, she did read Matilda on audio for Listening Library. Hmm. I didn't okay. know that. Oh, well, we didn't even plan this, guys. This is truly right, a top quiz. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, she did, and she won an Odyssey honor for it. Um, that's a really fun way to hear a preview before she goes ahead and narrates Erica's life story. We can hear Matilda's <laughs> Exciting Adventure by Roald Dahl. Okay, I'm reaching into the hat, and I want to know, Elizabeth, what is the yes. show that you are binge watching right now? Um, so you will find that I watch shows about eight years after everybody else. <laughs> eight years late Same. to everybody. <laughs> so my husband and I just started watching um, Call the Midwife, which is oh. amazing. I'm sure many of you have already watched it, but it's fantastic. It's set in the late 1950s in London, and it's just fantastic, and, um, and I can't say enough good stuff about it. So if you're like me and you haven't watched it for the last eight years, I highly recommend it. I'm with you. I have to say I'm really proud of myself right now because I am binge watching Normal People, which just came out last week. Good and for I've you, never though. been so on top of it before. I'm me and my husband are really loving it and it's it's great. I know Sydney on our team is like watching it for the second time. Sorry, Sydney, I'm outing your your binge watching. <laughs> but it's that good. So I'm I'm with you on usually being eight years behind. Okay, Jen, last but not least. Uh oh, she's hiding again. Why is it do <laughs> It's being tricky today. It keeps kicking us off. I don't know. Just, I'm here. <laughs> okay. I'm here. <laughs> Jen, what's the last thing you baked or cooked while listening to an audiobook, perhaps, or maybe not? <laughs> Tying it into books. Um, <laughs> well, let's see. So um, my kids are obsessed with this chocolate chocolate chip muffin mix. Um, which has which has been um, becoming increasingly difficult to find. So I attempted to make my own chocolate chocolate chip muffins, which Ooh. which got Did like you... a. <laughs> I like the mix better, but they they were serviceable. I thought they were great. But... I was going to say attempted sounds questionable, but no, I mean they. To me. You know, kids, they're like these aren't the same. <laughs> um, Oh. These don't have preservatives in them. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So, uh, well, so it was, it was it, uh, and and also, you know, it's questionable a chocolate chocolate chip muffin for breakfast kind of is like dessert for breakfast, but I mean, that's what pancakes and French toast are anyway, right? So why not yeah. add some chocolate? Exactly. I think I think you're allowed. I'm I'm allowing it. <laughs> that Thank sounds you, good Jen. to me. Thank you're you. welcome. It, it, that means a lot to me. <laughs> I'm a really strict teacher. Oh, you know what? It is Teacher Appreciation Week, so maybe that's why I'm taking on the pseudo teacher oh, role. Maybe. And thank you. If any teachers are watching today, thank you for watching. We appreciate you. We have some some special title treats later on to celebrate. Um, and I'll also add, I mentioned before the hashtag PRH Morning Buzz, but share your pop quiz answers with us too. We would love to know. This has been such a fun community to gather and, and learn more about all of you out there. And, and we're so happy to have a standing, a long standing coffee date now. Have we ever had a consistent six week coffee date in our lives with anyone? But these librarians were so thankful. So anyway, so let's move ahead for what you've really been waiting for. Not the pop quiz, but the book. <laughs> and here we go. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm first. Uh, I'm going to talk about some uh, soon to publish uh, thrillers. Um, I know it's always a perennial, perennially uh, popular category, and especially now when people are just looking to immerse themselves in a book that whisks them away. So the first one I'll talk about, um, we've been hearing a lot of great buzz um, from librarians about this book. It's Survival Instincts um, by Jen Waite. This is a heart-pounding story of secrets and survival, a haunting thriller about a mother and daughter who must draw strength from each other when they find themselves trapped in a cabin with a stranger who wants to control them or worse, kill them. Um, sadly, Jen Waite, the author, is a survival of an abusive marriage and also a single mom, just like her main character. In this novel, she draws from her experiences, which she detailed in her best-selling memoir, A Beautiful, Terrible Thing, uh, to create a claustrophobic horror um, and strength, a, sort of a tale of claustrophobic horror and strength. And this is perfect for fans of Final Girls and Descent. Um, book list called Survival Instincts, an effective look at familial and maternal bonds. Give this to fans of psychological thrillers and of strong female characters. Um, and next, attention fans of Big Little Lies, Real Housewives, and Gone Girl. You know who you are. Uh, everybody. The gold, <laughs> everybody. The Golden Cage is right up your alley. Um, Lackberg's American debut is a sexy, over-the-top psychological thriller that tells the story of a scorned wife of a billionaire um, and her delicious plot um, to get her revenge and bring him to his knees. Uh, a PW starred review says, Lackberg outdoes herself with this delectable tale of revenge, sexy, exquisite, and scorching. Uh, the poignant insights into women's capacity for self-sacrifice multi-dimensional characterizations, and celebration of female ingenuity will resonate with many. Lackberg reinforces her position as the thriller queen of Scandinavia. And then Booklist claims, comparisons to Gone Girl and Lisbeth Salander will undoubtedly be drawn, and the cunning revenge plot does justify these parallels, but there are satisfying themes of redemption, loyalty, and power here that push the story beyond vengeance. Definitely a, a great summer read. Um, next up, how far would someone go to replace you? In The New Girl, a new mother on maternity leave grows increasingly paranoid about her ambitious young temp in this Hitchcockian debut from the fashion editor at the UK Times. Uh, author Catherine Stedman, who wrote Something in the Water and Mr. Nobody blurbs, this debut thriller reads like The Devil Wears Prada meets Single White Female. I couldn't put it down. And Publishers Weekly says, a wickedly funny psychological thriller that's in turn brutal and tender. Um, in The Choice, readers are presented with a sliding doors moral dilemma. It's the end of the night, and Joanna is walking home alone. Then she hears the sound that every woman dreads, footsteps behind her. Getting, getting faster. She's sure it's him, the man from the bar who wouldn't leave her alone. So jo Joanna makes a snap decision. She turns, she pushes. Her pursuer tumbles down the steps and lies motionless, face down on the ground. 
now what? Addictive and compelling, the choice follows the two paths Joanna's future might take depending on the choice she makes at this moment. Um, in a starred review, book was called The Choice, a smart, ferociously paced novel. The clever, fresh structure will keep thriller enthusiasts glued as the pages flip by. And then finally, in Hurry Home, uh, Alexander Van Ness has the perfect life. She lives in a, an idyllic resort town in the Rocky Mountains. Um, she has her dream job of working in child protection. But when her long lost sister Ruth unexpectedly shows up at her door, Alex's perfect life is upended. Growing up, Ruth was always the troublemaker, constantly pulling Alex into her messes, and this time will be no different. But still, Alex will help Ruth under only one condition. They must never, ever talk about the past. Um, but when trouble befalls a local child, both women must confront the secrets that they promise to keep buried. So there you go, five fun thrillers for your, your patrons. These okay. all sound so good. I feel like every time I hear about these books, I'm like, why don't I read? I should read more thrillers. I'm such a scaredy cat, but yes, <laughs> I do want to listen or read to all of these. And I shared a few weeks ago, I don't know if you remember that there was a study done years ago that um, measured people's heart rates while they were either watching a movie or listening to an audio book and that they actually had a higher heart rate from listening. So if you really want to be terrified before you wait for the movie version of all of these books, which will probably be coming, <laughs> listening to the audio book could be an even more hair raising experience. Um, I should say that Jen Waite, this is rare. And we talked about this too a little bit. It's rare that an, an author reads their own novel on audiobook a lot of the times. Usually we hire an actor to do that. But Jen Waite does have an ex have experience as an actress, and she also read her audiobook of A Beautiful, Terrible Thing. Um, and who better? I mean, like you said, she's unfortunately been in a very similar situation, which is terrifying. Um, she talked about when she recorded her audiobook, though, the first time she thought it was going to be, she was scared of the emotional part of it, but what ended up being harder for her was the physical part of just recording itself, which is wow. really difficult, even if you have acting experience. Um, but she is back, and she will be um, recording this one very soon, so I'm thrilled to hear. I think it'll bring an extra emotional layer to it. Um, I don't have narrator information for all of these yet for audio, but the choice will be read by Katherine Lee McEwen, and I'm very excited to hear more about the other one, but it should be awesome. thrilling. <laughs> Um, so last week, Jen asked um, our colleague Miriam what she was reading during the pop quiz. And Miriam said that she was reading a short story collection called In the Country and discussed how she felt like the short story, the nature of it was so much more digestible during this period of time in particular. And we could like feel the hum of agreement through our computer screen. <laughs> so we decided to talk a little bit this week and, and focus on um, some fantastic story collections that are coming up and we're looking forward to. Um, so the first coming in September is a Daddy by Emma Klein. This is from the New York Times bestselling um, author of The Girls, and it's a collection that explores the dark corners of the human experience. Um, there are 10 remarkable stories. She portrays the moments when the ordinary is disturbed, when like normal life buckles, and it reveals like the perversity and violence that's simmering just below the surface. She explores power dynamics in families and relationships, and then the distance between our true and false selves. Um, and she asks, all of the stories ask a thought-provoking question like, what are the costs of one's choices? So um, I think this will be eagerly anticipated by lots and lots of people, again, coming in September. Um, I'm going to go a little bit out of order, um, and the next one I'm going to talk about is The Inheritors. Uh, this is a collection from the O. Henry Prize winning author, um, and it's a heartbreakingly beautiful and brutal exploration of lives that are fragmented by the Pacific side, at the, on the Pacific side of World War II. It spans 150 years. It's set in multiple locations in colonial and post-colonial Asia and the United States. Um, and it paints this kaleidoscopic portrait of characters as they grapple with loss, imperialism, and the effects of war. Uh, the stories are interconnected and designed to speak to the other stories. Um, illuminating the complicated ways we experienced and pass on our personal and shared histories. It's a meditation on history and memory um, and storytelling, and it stands in the company of authors like Lisa Ko, Viet Thanh Nguyen, and Min Jin Lee. Um, and then next is Animal Spirit by Francesca Marciano. Um, this is a story collection for fans of George Saunders or Karen Russell, Laurie Moore, um, and it's centered in Rome, although it moves around a little bit. And it paints a landscape, a multiple landscapes that are populated by 
vividly and hauntingly by animals. Um, there are violent seagulls, magical snakes, and a tiny dog on the side of a deserted road. Um, in unforgettable cinematic frames, she tells about the lives especially of women. Um, an affair ends painfully at a dinner table. An actress's past comes crashing down on her during an audition. An unhappy wife seeks respite in a historic palazzo. Um, and as Michiko Kakutani put it, Marciano has the ability to capture the entire arc of a character's life in just a handful of pages. Um, next is a backlist title, but something that we think is very worth um, another look by many. Um, this is Grand Union by Zadie Smith. This is her first ever story collection, which was long listed for the Carnegie Medal, um, and where she turns her powers of observation to mine the fraught and complex experience of life in the modern world. She moves exhilaratingly across genres and perspectives from historic to vividly current to dystopian. Um, it's sharp, it's prescient um, about time and place, identity and rebirth, and the persistent leg legacies that haunt and our present selves. Um, so please, if you haven't um, read Zadie Smith, go back and check it out. Um, and finally, uh, for our Spanish language readers, is Complete Stories by Jorge Luis Borges. Um, and we have this in Spanish language edition and an ebook. These are the collected stories of Borges, um, which make up some of the most brilliant and influential legacies in Western literature. And they're all collected in this single volume. His universe with its mirrors, labyrinths, tigers, libraries, gauchos, masks, um, is already one of the most fundamental landscapes in the 20th century. And here readers will find masterpieces like The Garden with Forking Paths, Pierre Menard, author of El Quixote, The South, Ulrica, and many, many more. To read these stories is to reread the history of humanity and to embark on an enriching, beautiful, and exciting adventure. I love all of these. And you're right. We could hear the hum through the computers. I love how you put that. It was like such a resounding, like, yes, this is what we need. And yeah. I think from the audio side, this is also a great way if patrons haven't listened to audiobooks yet, this is a great way for them to kind of dip their toe in that experience a little bit. Um, because, you know, we often, and I, I'm a little sad to say this, but, you know, we often say, oh, for, for your commute, if it's not that long, try a short story. And I know now things are a little different for a lot of people, but I think even within your own home or if you're taking a short walk, um, trying the audiobook could be a great way to get a little more escapism in your life. Um, I wanted to add, because Daddy isn't available till September, as, Elib Eliz ugh, as Elizabeth mentioned, tongue-tied. Tongue <laughs> um, there has been incredible audio praise for The Girls, which um, obviously was her first book. Um, and book list, I love this quote, listeners will catch the poetry of Klein's writing far better with their ears than their eyes in this fine production. They absolutely loved the audio production. Audiophile gave it an earphones award saying um, the performance is extraordinary. So if you read it years ago and you've forgotten what it was like, you can re-experience it on audio um, or just, you know, if the holds are high for this upcoming title in the fall, you can remind patrons to try that one too. And I also wanted to point out that Zadie Smith is on the recording of Grand Union, which is incredible. She reads the first and the last of the 19 stories. And um, I think that's just such a beautiful way to experience her work, to get a snippet of what um, she intended through her own voice. And then the other narrator is Doc Brown and um, he reads the other 17 stories and he's was called by Audiophile as having an entertaining ebb and flow of energy, which if we don't all need that right now, I don't know what we need. So it sounds good to me. <laughs> Uh-oh. Parenting. <laughs> oh, that's what we need right now. <laughs> parents, parents, parents out there. Hi, how are you? How are we, how are we doing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Should we turn parents. this into a therapy session, Eric? <laughs> don't, don't tempt me. Okay. Parenting in the time of Corona, I could, I should write a book, but I'm just journaling right now. Uh, but here, here, we've compiled for you um, a collection of books uh, from experts in their respective fields. Uh, through the stories of kids and parents in the middle school trenches, Jen, how are you doing over there? Jen Child. Um, <laughs> do, you have, do you have a middle schooler? You do, right? Yeah. yeah four, 14. I do. Oh. I do. Uh, here we have New York Times bestselling author uh, Judy Warner revealing why these years are so painful, how parents unwittingly make them worse, and what we all need to do to grow up. 
Her newest book, And Then They Stopped Talking to Me, traces a century of research on middle childhood and brings together the voices of social scientists, psychologists, educators, and parents. Part cultural critique and part call to action, this essential book unpacks one of life's most formative periods and shows how we can all help our children not only survive it, but thrive. There are so many books about parenting teens and the littles, but none that take such a comprehensive look at the history, culture, and meaning of the middle school years. You could recommend this to patrons who read well-researched pop psych books like Quiet or 10% Happier, um, and also readers of practical parenting books such as How to Raise an Adult and Masterminds and Wingmen. Um, a powerful and validating lifeline, Decoding Boys, will help today's parents raise safe, healthy, resilient, and emotionally secure young men. It urges parents to help boys process what they are going through in the same way that we now do for girls. Her TEDx talk on this topic was uh, extremely engaging and has millions of views. Uh, she goes beyond medical explanations for why our boys act the way that they do. Dr. Natterson explains how modern culture mixes badly with male adolescent biology and offers science, strategies, scripts, and tips for getting it right. Uh, readers of her previous books, The Care and Keeping of You and Guy Stuff, will be looking for this. Also recommend uh, this book for readers of boy classics like Raising Cain and The Wonder of Boys. What is my child thinking? Rooted in evidence-based clinical psychology and championing uh, positive parenting, is, uh, What is My Child Thinking is newly available in Spanish and will help you tune into your child's most innermost thoughts and be the parent that you want to be. Covering all your child's developmental milestones from ages two to seven years and using more than 100 everyday scenarios, the book leads you through each step, step by step, explaining not only your child's behavior and the psychology behind it, but also your feelings as a parent. It then gives instant recommendations for what you could say and do in response uh, to best resolve the situation. Dyslexia is the most common learning disorder on the planet, which I did not know, uh, and affects about one in five individuals, regardless of age or gender. For parents, educators, and dyslexic individuals interested in understanding, identifying, and overcoming this common learning disorder, overcoming dyslexia has long been considered the dyslexia Bible. World-renowned expert Dr. Shaywitz gives us a substantially updated and augmented edition of her classic work with the second edition. Drawing on an additional 15 years of cutting-edge research, offering new information on all aspects of dyslexia and reading problems, and provides the tools that parents, teachers, and all dyslexic individuals need. And this <laughs> last title speaks to me. <laughs> rage, rage against the minivan. You can see where I, my mood is. Rage <laughs> against the minivan is for readers of Operating Instructions by Anne Lamont, Girl, Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis, and Love Warrior by Glennon Doyle. Uh, oh, shout out for Glennon Doyle's um, morning meeting on her Instagram account. If you're not watching Glennon Doyle, check her out. Um, I, I adore her. Uh, the author's podcast, um, uh, Rage Against the Minivan, her podcast is called Selfie and has over 1 million downloads and counting. Here in her book, she gives readers a heartfelt, subversively funny memoir and a bold personal manifesto that pushes back against the superficial expectations of motherhood and challenges the idea that there's a right way to raise your kids. With hard-won knowledge gained from having four kids in four years, let's take a minute for her, as both a mom, as both a mom of white and black children, and a licensed therapist, Howerton talks frankly about the thorny issues uh, parents face today, whether it's finding good mom friends, con confronting racism, disciplining other people's kids, or falling short of that elusive work-life balance, which that doesn't exist right now in the time of corona. Um, <laughs> Howerton's experience, along with her ability to laugh at herself, reminds parents that they are not alone on this unpredictable ride. Uh, well, thank you. I love that you just ended with we're not alone. I just think like <laughs> this is alone. so important. <laughs> I love that we're connecting with each other. And I think a slide like this is just so helpful right now, especially. Um, and from my audio perch, I just have to say, I think, 
you know, it goes without saying that sometimes it's hard to find time to read if you're, you know, especially at home with, with whether it's one child or, or multiple children. Um, so having the audio edition of these available is really important. For the ones that have audio available, they are all read by the author. Just the title of and then they stop talking to me, like give me chills. And I love, thank you to everyone who's tuning in and like, entering comments in our Q&A box on the side because somebody wrote like middle school is the worst and I'm just like yes I know it's so hard and I think like thank gosh for books like these um and I'll add also that you know overcoming dyslexia there's such a natural fit and such importance to have books on dyslexia available on audio because for people who are dyslexic oftentimes that's the way that they um can best take in information and, and read and make it easier for them we once did a um a, a partnership with um, Dyslexia Helps from the audio standpoint, so that's a wonderful resource as well. But um, this is a great book, and, and I'm just so thrilled it's available in audio because I think that's so important. Um, and also, any of the children's titles we talk about with, with kids, if they're dealing with dyslexia, then offering the audio edition is also a great a great solution to, to help. And I'm interested in decoding boys, having a boy at home. I really like listening to her <laughs> TED talk. And she, she talked about during her, this is the author interview that she wrote this because she was getting so many questions specifically about this and that she didn't feel like there was really a book out there that addressed this topic, particularly from a, you know, an MD standpoint. And so she was taking on the task. So aren't we grateful? <laughs> I have to say, when we were at PLA, we met author Ariel Lahan, who is the mother of four boys, oh, yeah. and she's told me something that I've since seen is totally true, but she said, like, boys in middle school, she calls them the cave years because they literally are just in their room, and they only come out when they're hungry, and, <laughs> it, like, during quarantine, I've seen that to be true. Like, we'll see George when he's hungry. Other than that, doors closed, you know, don't bother him, the cave years. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. That should be a book title, too. <laughs> you also have to just say one thing I love about our morning buzz is it's one hour a week when I can say to my family, like, Mommy's talking to librarians. You can't come in the office. Don't come in. So I have one hour. So we might maybe we'll go over. Maybe we'll go over a little. <laughs> this is going to be a new 24 hour, hour buzz. Two hours. We'll keep buzzing. <laughs> Okay, um, next up, um, you are probably aware that May is Asian and Pacific Islander Heritage uh, Month. Um, uh, and while many of you won't be able to create physical displays, uh, book lists of materials are always um, useful. So we wanted to share some of our top picks in this category. Um, first up from David Chang, he is the beloved chef. Um, behind Mama Fuko and the star of Netflix, Ugly Delicious. Uh, Eat a Peach is an intimate account of the making of a chef, the story of the modern restaurant world that he helped shape, and how he discovered that success can be much harder to understand than failure. Uh, Chrissy Teigen said of Eat a Peach, David puts words to so many of the things we all feel, sharing generously of his own journey so we can all benefit in the process. Um, in Minor Feelings, poet and essayist Kathy Park Hong fearlessly and provocatively blends memoir, cultural criticism, and history to expose fresh truths about racialized consciousness in America. Uh, this is part memoir, um, part cultural criticism. This collection is vulnerable, humorous, and provocative. A Kirkus Review says, a fierce and timely meditation on race and gender issues from Hong's perspective as a Korean American woman, a candid and unapologetically political, Hong's text deftly explores the explosive emotions surrounding race in ways sure to impact the discourse surrounding Asian identity, as well as race and belonging in America. And then uh, for something very different from Charles Yu, um, in Interior Chinatown, uh, it's a story of Willis Wu. He doesn't perceive himself as a protagonist even in his own life. He's merely generic Asian man. Sometimes he gets to be background, oriental, making a weird face, or even disgraced son, but he's always relegated to a prop. Yet every day he leaves his tiny room in Chinatown and enters the Golden Palace restaurant where black and white, a procedural cop show is in perpetual production. He's a bit player there too, but he dreams of being Kung Fu guy. 
That's the most respected role anyone who looks like him can attain. At least that's what he's always been told, time and time again. Except by one person, of course, his mother, who says to him, be more. Uh, Terry Hong in a book with Star Review said, uh, Interior Chinatown conflates history, sociology, and ethnography with the timeless evils of racism, sexism, and elitism in a multi-generational epic that's both rollicking entertainment and scathing commentary. It ingeniously draws on real-life Hollywood. Uh, the book's sobering reality will resonate with savvy readers. And then I also wanted to briefly mention uh, They Called Us Enemy, uh, which is George Takai's brilliant graphic memoir, which won the 2020 uh, Asian Pacific American Award for Young Adult Literature. Uh, this is available both in English and Spanish language editions. Uh, also, an expanded English language edition is scheduled for July. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm sure uh, many of you have heard of this, but uh, They Called Us Enemy is George Takai's firsthand account of his childhood imprisonment within American concentration camps during World War II. Uh, the joys and terrors of growing up under legalized racism, his mother's hard choices, uh, his father's unyielding faith in democracy, and the way all of these experiences planted the seeds for his um, astonishing future. Um, and then finally, um, something very different, Natalie Tan's book of luck and fortune. Um, this can be described as the Joy Luck Club meets Chocolats and Amelie. Um, it's a magical debut set in San Francisco's Chinatown. Um, it explore, explores grief, cultural heritage, uh, good food, and is also chock full of delicious recipes. Uh, uh, Publishers Weekly Starred Review says, Lim serves up love, loss, heritage, and hints of the supernatural on a silver platter in this magical and mouth-watering debut, uh, this eminently fil filmable tale of finding one's own path while honoring one's history is delicious and spellbinding. Um, and as you can see on the screen, we have plenty more um, titles perfect for Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. Um, if you just follow our tiny URL, you'll have a whole list of uh, suggested titles to work with. And just to follow up with um, what you said about all the delicious food descriptions in Natalie Tan's book, that's a great listen while you cook choice if you want to check out the audio or encourage listeners at your libraries to do that. We talked about that combination a few weeks ago, and um, this is the perfect choice, I think, for that kind of listen while you cook audiobook. Also, when David Chang's book is available, he's going to be reading the audiobook, and that's sort of another oh, obvious so. pick for that <laughs> combination. And I want to add um, Interior Chinatown, since it's written in a screenplay format, that's a very cool mm -hmm. audiobook as well, or just book in general. I mean, I just love when um, books take on those different unique formats and having a funky screenplay for this is just really illuminating about what the character's going through in a different way. And um, it did on audio win an earphones award. And I'll just tell you what they said. They said, Joel De La Fuente, the narrator, gives a spectacular performance filled with drama, theatrics, and razzle-dazzle that beautifully showcases Charles Yu's Charles satire of Asians in America. Um, so that could be a really fun way to experience it, especially if holds are very high on the ebook editions. And um, minor feelings, is incredibly power on audio. It's read by the, powerful on audio. I'm just all tongue tied today. It's been. It feels like last week was like a hundred years ago. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. go time. Um, but this is read by the author on audio, and just like I said, incredibly powerful. Audiophile said that she. Kathy Park Hong brings a poet's rigor to her narration of these seven essays. She speaks every word as if it is absolutely essential. And I think for something like this, um, that's a really powerful way to experience what she's writing about. Um, and then finally, just I know you swooned when um, Erica, when she talked about George Takai, oh. and I'm reminiscing too. I was fortunate enough to see the play Allegiance, um, which is a similar storyline that, that George Takai wrote that was on Broadway a few years ago, and he was in it. And I feel now, especially like what a privilege to have ever seen a Broadway show. I missed that, but, um, but being able to experience the story and now in Spanish is just really remarkable. So he uh, spoke as a keynote at ALA annual. Uh, ages ago, 2019, um, and to over 3,000 librarians, and he had us all in tears. It was such a beautiful 
speech and and his story is amazing. Yeah. And I'm a not so I'm a not so secret Trekkie, so I love him. <laughs> <Yeah>. Noted. <laughs> Um, so as Jen mentioned earlier, um, we wanted to take a moment to say thank you and honor all of our teachers during this Teacher Appreciation Week. Um, every year we thank our teachers for the things that they do for students and families and schools every single day. Um, but this year, as teachers have created e-learning curricula at a moment's notice, and as many parents like us have been called to take a more <laughs> difficult role in um, teaching our children, um, we have realized just how difficult a job these um, teachers have, and uh, we thank them even more. Um, so we wanted to just highlight a few books, some practical, some inspirational, um, that highlight the true power of great teachers. Um, the first one is Reading with Patrick. It, this is by Michelle Kuo, and it's a memoir of her life-changing friendship between her as an idealistic young teacher and a gifted student of hers. Um, when Michelle Kuo left Harvard University, she went to the rural town of Helena, Arkansas, as a Teach for America volunteer, and she was bursting with optimism and drive, but soon she encountered the jarring realities of this very poor community. Um, but she was still inspired by her students, like Patrick. He was 15 and in the eighth grade, but he began to thrive under her exacting attention. Um, but after two years of teaching, Michelle decided to attend law school and left Arkansas. And on the eve of her law school graduation, she learns that Patrick has been jailed for murder. And she feels she can't help but feeling she left the Delta prematurely and she's determined to fix her mistake. So she returns to Helena and resume, resumes her work with Patrick, reading with him every day. They pour over classic novels, poems, and works of history and he begins to thrive again. Um, the Atlantic said this quote about the book, in all of literature addressing education, race, poverty, and criminal justice, there has been nothing quite like reading with Patrick. High praise indeed. And then next, um, The Freedom Writer's Diary, um, which is a now classic work and has been created into a PBS documentary. Um, this again tells the story of an idealistic first year teacher in Long Beach, California named Erin Grohl. And she comes into her classroom full of energy and vivacity and she finds this first class is filled with what are quote unteachable and at risk students but she refuses to take that as it is. Um, she reboots her entire curriculum using treasured books such as Anne Frank's diary to guide and combat intolerance and misunderstanding, and her students begin to record their thoughts and feelings in their own diaries and dub themselves freedom writers. These students, like civil rights activist Rosa Parks and the freedom riders, heard society tell them one thing and then really refused to listen. Another fantastic, inspiring work um, that I think deserves attention every single year. Um, and now some more practical advice. Um, a moment to remind teachers and students and parents to breathe. Happy Teachers Change the World. Um, it's the first official authoritative manual from Thich Nhat Hanh um, Plum Village and their approach to mindfulness in education. It spans the whole range of schools and grade levels from preschool through higher education. And it's filled with step-by-step -step techniques perfected by educators along with inspirational stories of the ways teachers have made mindfulness and this practice alive in their classrooms and relevant for them and their students um, and across even through their communities. Um, so a very nice reminder for everyone. Um, and to finish, finally, a bit of advice. Love Teach, the e-galley is available for this. It's coming out in July. Um, it's a collection of hopeful, hilarious musings and serious advice for teachers. Um, so many teachers will tell you the first year the hardest and even the most confident sometimes ask themselves, am I cut out for this? Um, Kelly Trelevin is a teacher and a once anonymous blogger behind the blog Love Teach, and she wants all teachers to know that they are not alone. Uh, in her debut book, she gives rookie teachers the advice she wished that she had had when she started out in a large school district in Houston. And it's everything from practical logistical questions like how to organize a classroom to many deeper issues like how to build relationships with your students, navigate the administration, and avoid burnout. It's filled with raw feeling, humor, and razor sharp perspective, and it supports teachers in their fights for a better future and helps them celebrate all of the victories large and small. And we have a whole collection of other wonderful books that celebrate teachers, so please visit the URL on the screen and you'll find lots and lots of love for teachers everywhere.
Yeah. Well, like we've been saying there's a newfound, as, as if we already had this love and appreciation before, but even more so when we're taking on the task of teaching at home more than ever before um, with kids at home. And just to add, the two that are available in audio are read by the authors. Um, which gives even more perspective. Someone pointed out how they love the TED Talk with Michelle Kuo, and um, I'm thrilled she, she reads the audiobook, and she also did it. This is the author, which was fun to hear. Um, and then Love Teach will be recorded by the author as well. So I, I can't wait to hear those real stories from her herself, and to, I think it'll be really moving to listen to. And then to add on um, from all of these fabulous categories, just some other audio ideas for the kids and teens. If you want to connect, um, first up, survival instincts. We had our thrillers category, and I think there's increasing demand for those really, truly, I think, scary reads and listens for kids and teens um, that still fall within the fair. I mean, these are YA listens, um, but the twin, this, get, get a load of this, this is a twisty psychological thriller. She's already a number one best-selling author, um, and in this book, Ivy finds out that her twin sister Iris, Iris is trying to push her out of her own life and might be responsible for their mother's death. How's that for terrifying when you're <laughs> trapped with your children at home? Um, but this is read by Emma Galvin and is a truly, I think, a great crossover, too. I think adults really love listening to this as well. And then um, I wanted to add that coming in the summer is The Unleashed, which is the sequel to Daniel Vega's The Haunted. And this, as Bookless pointed out, there's not a lot of true YA horror perhaps available, like for true horror fans. And I think this could really fit the bill if you're looking for something to recommend. This is a sequel to The Haunted, so what's great is that you have two things you could offer someone at once, hopefully, if they need to have their satisfa satisfaction um, provided for. Um, this is the sequel to The Haunted, where Hendrix discovers that even though Seal House is gone, I guess that's a spoiler alert, um, <laughs> the hauntings in Drearfield are far from over, and it's up to her to stop them. Um, so a lot goes down at Steelhouse in the first book, and now Hendrix just wants her life to return to normal. Prom's coming up, which I think that could be fun to, to read and listen to things related to prom, too, since we're missing that this year. Mm -hmm. And so Hendrix tries to pitch in, and um, the events of the last few months are haunting her, and nothing is what she expects. So this is a real ha horrifying haunting listen um, that I think I'm too scared to listen to, but all horror fans <laughs> love it. I'm a child. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know. Um, so to continue on with teacher appreciation, again, I wanted to include some titles to recommend that these each have two books in the series. So I think um, if kids fall in love with one, then they immediately have something else to go to. So the Mr. Terrupt series is wonderful. Um, now we have Mr. Terrupt Falls again. It's read by two fabulous narrators. And then Making Mistakes on Purpose, which is the sequel to Miss Rask Rask Raskot's Girls. That's hard to say. <laughs> That's why you have to listen to the audio so you can hear how Catherine Kelgren pulled it off beautifully. Um, so those are two wonderful suggestions. But we also, on the Books on Tape website, um, have a whole teacher appreciation collection full of listens for all ages. Um, on the short story side, these are two incredible collections. In January, the anniversary edition of Walter Dean Meyer's 145th Street came out. These are phenomenal short stories, but this new anniversary edition also gives you a little more of the rich history of Harlem. There's um, just beautiful content, t touching tributes in addition to the beautiful sh short stories by this too many accolades to list um, author. I mean, Walter Dean Myers was a three-time National Book Award finalist. He had two Newbery honors, five Coretta Scott King. I mean, this is a wonderful collection to introduce to students and listeners and patrons who may not be familiar with his beautiful work. Um, and it was also an ALA Yalsa Best Book for Adults. And this year was the first time it came out on audio, read by a phenomenal full cast. I mean, some of your favorites are in there. Um, and then also 19 Love Songs by David Levithan. This came out, he writes Mm -hmm. um, Valentine's Day stories every year for his friends. And so the popularity of that kind of tradition in his own life led to him writing this collection of 19 love songs. He contributes to the audiobook himself, and it's also read by a full cast. And obviously, as we all feel right now, Valentine's Day is not the only time we need or want love stories in our lives. I think lives, this is the perfect time 
to find a little bit of that joy. And also what's cool, if you're already a fan of David, this lets you revisit like the storyline of two boys kissing. Um, so you might find some familiar characters in this collection. So that's a lot of fun. And then finally on this slide, the Asian Pacific American Heritage Month picks for a listening library front desk was of course um, a winner of the Asian Pacific American Award um, for children's literature. And this has such energetic narration. It's just wonderful. If you didn't know it was available in audio, it is. And um, Booklist said, and this is really important, I think, especially for kids' audiobooks, that it has believable accents without stereotypes. And that's exactly what we need and want. Um, so this is a wonderful listen. And then coming up, I'm really excited, Linda Sue Park has Prairie Lotus coming out. Um, this is a young half Asian girl in 1880. Um, wonderful for fans of the Little House books, and obviously that sparks a whole other conversation in this day and age, and I think this is a great um, fit to be able to hand to people who are already were fans of the Little House books, but this is a, a much more needed and, and um, different take on that time period. Um, Kirkus gave it a star already and says it's remarkable, in a word, it's remarkable, no surprise. Um, and it's about a girl who's determined to fit in and um, realize her dreams. One of the things that includes is getting an education. So I think especially during Teacher Appreciation Week, this should especially have some appeal in that department. But I think um, we can all look forward to this coming in June, which is also audiobook month. So we'll have some narrator announcement news coming later for this book. Oh, the class of 2020. Yeah. Um, so many conversations happening right now about, you know, milestones that are happening in this time of social distancing. Uh, just this morning, uh, I read a, a great Twitter thread from journalist Connie Schultz where uh, she talks about how we're living in a time of dreams deferred but not extinguished. And that just really resonated with me. Um, uh, with a lot of teens um, of, or graduates of all ages who were looking forward to celebrating their accomplishments um, and now they're having to find alternatives, uh, our authors are here to help. Uh, so mark your calendars for Tuesday, May 12th and get your tickets. Uh, for a star-studded virtual commencement ceremony with speeches from uh, the likes of Martha Stewart, mm -hmm. Wes Moore, Lauren Graham, David Brooks, and so many more. And then also just announced, I think yesterday, I have no idea what, t what day it is, but um, Michelle, Obama's, <laughs> Michelle Obama recently announced um, that she has partnered with YouTube Originals to give a commencement speech on <sighs> June 6th. Uh, so take a look and uh, find information on that, too. I'll definitely be tuning in, even though I graduated um, X amount of years ago. <laughs> um, and uh, Congratulations, by the way, by George Saunders. It's a powerful and inspiring meditation on kindness. Uh, in May 2013, George Saunders gave an eight-minute convocation address at Syracuse University. This speech struck such a deep emotional chord across the country that it was then, uh, when it was first published on the New York Times website, a few months later, it went viral and got well over a million page views. Uh, this book is the expanded version of that speech uh, and brings Saunders trademark wit, wisdom, and compassion to an even broader audience. Uh, renowned psychologist Jordan B. Peterson is an intellectual provocateur, if you can imagine. Uh, and he brings his uncompromising voice to readers wanting to lead a deeper and more, more profoundly meaningful life in his new book, 12 Rules for Life. At once informative, surprising, and humorous, Dr. Peterson tells us straightforwardly why skateboarding kids absolutely should be left alone, why you should always pet a cat if you meet one on the street, and what... <laughs> What dreadful fate awaits those who carelessly criticize everything but themselves. He discusses discipline, responsibility, and the necessity of clear, truthful thinking, distilling the discoveries of science and the lessons from the great myths of the world into 12 profound directives for living properly in today's ever transforming world. Uh, Dr. Peterson's YouTube channel has over 300,000 subscriber, subscribers and 15 million views plenty of content there to engage and enlighten all of us and our graduates. Now raise your hand if this sounds at all familiar to you. Too many of us feel crushed under the weight of our own expectations. We run ourselves ragged trying to please everyone all the time. 
We lose sleep ruminating about whether we may have offended somebody, uh, pass up on opportunities that take us out of our comfort zone, and avoid rejection at all costs. Uh, Rashima Sujani is the founder and CEO of Girls Who Code, a national nonprofit organization working to close the gender gap in technology while teaching girls confidence and bravery through coding. In Brave Not Perfect, Rashma shares powerful insights and practices to help us let go of our need for perfection and make bravery a lifelong habit. By being brave, not perfect, we can all become the authors of our biggest, boldest, and most joyful life. Her TED Talk on this topic has been viewed four million times and shared widely. This book speaks powerfully to perfectionists the way quiet spoke to introverts. With the rhymed Spanish edition of Dr. Seuss's modern classic, All the Places You'll Go, um, which is the perfect gift for graduates of all ages, which I can personally attest to. I have a copy for each of my sons uh, since preschool, not that they're far from preschool, but um, and each year I ask their teachers just to write a quick little memory or, or message to their older selves. Uh, which will be, I don't know what class year they are, but um, uh, a nice little token <laughs> from childhood. Oh. Oh. Con confession, it's the only, the only Pinterest project I've ever followed through on because it had a book a in it. It's a great one, though. That's, I book. love that. Uh, in this wonderfully wise graduation speech, Dr. Seuss addresses life's ups and downs while encouraging readers to find the success that lies within. Uh, with a with New York Times bestselling author, uh, Brett Montagu. He was looking for life, the, for the meaning of a good life by seeking advice from the very young and the very old in becoming better grown-ups. Mm -hmm. He is the creator of the web series Kid President and the author <laughs> of the New York Times bestseller Kid President's Guide to Being Awesome. But this is a book for adults who are looking to be good adults. Uh, beautifully designed and featuring Montague's own whimsical four-color illustrations that appeal to the kid in all of us, Becoming Better Grown-Ups shares the purpose and meaning we can all discover merely by listening to each other, young and old alike, and reveals that in a world that seems increasingly childish, the secret to joy is, in fact, to become a little more childlike. Readers of inspirational books, Jen, Jen Rubens. I don't know what you're talking about. Childlike. <laughs> I'm very mature. Yes. Uh, and then, uh, and then I'm gonna lead, lead oh. off. Oh wait, <laughs> let me. Well, wait, I have one. I have my dark humor. Wait, wait, just wait. Here's the title. <laughs> For those readers and graduation gift givers who really want to lean into the dark humor of this current social distancing situation. <laughs> Following the format of Anna Quinlan's uh, commencement address, Being Perfect, and George Saunders, previously mentioned, congratulations, by the way, assume the worst might look typical from the outside, but it is anything but. This commencement address will never be given because graduation speakers are supposed to offer encouragement and inspiration. And that's not what you need. You need a warning. <laughs> oh, no. And that is how Carl Hyacinth begins to attempt to prepare young men and women for their future. And who better to warn them, warn them about their precarious paths forward than Carl Hyacinth? The answer, after reading Assume the Worst, is nobody. Because it's not just funny. It is, in its own Hyacinth way, extremely wise and even hopeful. Well, it might not be completely full of hope, but there are certainly enough silver linings in there to keep us all going. Oh, and even though it says this is a graduation speech you'll never hear, if you do want to hear it, <laughs> it is read by Carl Hyacinth. Oh. <laughs> As are all of these um, uh, books, except Oh, the Places You'll Go is read by John Lisko in, on audio, <laughs> not by Dr. Cool. Um, and also, I have to say, I was trying to get ready did you this isn't on the side but there's also a pop-up version did you know this of all the places you'll go did not oh. I have backwards i protect this like crazy for my two-year-old because this is oh, yeah. i've been saving this forever um but it's really cool not really good for libraries i guess <laughs> with last one circulation checkout um but a really cool personal book that Shoot. i have on my shelf but um the audio read by john let's go also really awesome. But all of these, I love listening to Reshma Sojani. Um, I love that she reads this. These were such amazing picks. 
Thank you, Erica. And now to move on um, related to this. So as Erica mentioned, we have a star studded commencement speech coming up. Yes, it sounds amazing. I'm very excited. But you know, often these commencement videos are star studded and we're so excited to talk to you guys every week. We look to our librarians and our teachers at all times, but especially times like this. And we feel like we want to invite you to speak to the class of 2020 as well. Um, so we're inviting you to submit your videos instead of a question this week. And we're going to get to the question results in a second. I know we're going long today. Jen Child, you're welcome. <laughs> Stick with us, though, because we have a game coming up to reveal the answer to last week's trivia question. But this week, we're asking for a little bit more from you, but really easy. You can use your iPhone. Try and hold it horizontally if you can. We have some tips at the link. Um, so go to tinyurl.com, PRH library grad video, and, and we would and love little, to... Sorry, I was going to say it'll also be in the wrap up. So Yes. So don't feel like you have yes. to scribble this down like crazy, but we're really excited to hear what kind of advice you'll give, whether or not you, you know, want to say to keep reading, which we also welcome. We have some prompt ideas, but also if you have a little message you want to share, um, and it could be included in our librarian commencement video, which is just as valuable and meaningful to us as a star studded one. So you're our stars and we thank you for participating in advance, um, but we hope you have some fun doing this with us. And then now, wait one second. I have a couple of things I need to do. Wait, let's see if this works. Oh my gosh, it's already given away. We're playing a game and, oh my gosh, okay. Here's uh, my music. A, a little boy. What? Erica, Erica had a visitor. We're okay, going over. So <laughs> we're playing Wheel of Reading. I'm Dana White. I put on my sequence. Oh my God, oh my God. God. Yeah. <laughs> And we're getting ready to play America Game for Librarians. So, welcoming to the stage. <laughs> welcoming to the stage today to spin. We have. I'm going to be Vanna and Pat Sajak in one, but Vanna's clothes are much more fun. Let's be honest. So I here's said my, I wanted to be Vanna. <laughs> I know, Jen. We can all be Vanna. Do you have sequins on? Vanna, no. 80s style? I wasn't prepared. <laughs> you can be style. Vanna, too. Um, this dress was my mom's in the 80s, and it's been oh. in my closet for years. And I thought, what better? I went to a costume party once, and I thought, I want to put on some sequins and be Vanna for Wheel of Fortune. So here we go. I'm 80s Vanna, 80s Vanna White. We're going to play Wheel of Reading. And um, we're welcoming. I'm nervous. To <laughs> We're welcoming to our stage today to play America's Library Game, Elizabeth Fabian, <laughs> Erica Malnachuk. <laughs> My studio audience is very quiet today. I don't know why. Um, and Jennifer Child. <laughs> so this is going to be. Now we could go to the next slide. This is going to be one of those lightning rounds where. I don't spin the letters till the end because if I could figure out how to spin letters during a WebEx, then that would be really, really impressive. But I have sequence on, so that's good enough, right? <laughs> so today's category is a Mother's Day round, lightning round, and the category is literary character. We asked librarians last week to tell us who their favorite mother in literature is. I'm going to give you each a chance to guess. You can see the number of letters on the board. Um, six letter answer. No cheating was took place in this <laughs> preparation of this WebEx. Everyone told Definitely me they did not, not peek at the next Definitely slide. Did not. Otherwise, you did won't not. win. Oh, hey. <laughs> I guess Marmy. I'm going to guess Marmy. <laughs> you win a car. <laughs> Sorry to everyone who didn't get that. You're the cutest. <laughs> This car comes full of library books from your local branch that will never be due. And uh, <laughs> we thank you all for playing America's Game. Did anyone else want to guess Marmy? Was that what everyone was going to guess? No. Yeah. I was, no. was going to guess. <laughs> okay. I, I have another car. Here. Oh, Erica, oh, you can easily. win a race car. It might not fit as many books in it, but still really cool. <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> Elizabeth, did you have a guess you were going to say? Well, 
my the number of letters was up, but I was going to say Marilla from Anne of Green Gables. Oh, oh well, funny, you should mention that. Oh, oh Let's God. go to the next slide to see oh. what the other responses were. There were lots of fun ones. So the number one pick by mm. almost a landslide, but a close second was Molly Weasley from Harry Potter. Um, really fun to hear Jim Dale take on that role. But um, the number one pick was Marmee. I put on this slide, there is a new edition of Little Women coming out in the fall with Lori Hall Anderson writing a, a new introduction, which I adore her. I think that's wow. an amazing combination. So there you go. Yeah. But also, yes, Marilla is on there. Good job, Elizabeth. I don't have a car for you, but <laughs> what can I give you? Here, you win some wine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, I'll oh, take wait, it. I, want the wine. I will take I that. Want the wine. <laughs> I'm not drinking on the bus, but it was on my kitchen table, which <laughs> is in front of my computer. Um, but these are the other amazing answers we got. Such a range. I loved um, yeah. seeing all your amazing responses. So thank you for participating with Favorite Moms in Literature. And thank you in advance for next week. Instead of the question, we have our video request. I can't wait to see your faces and hear your voices since we've been separated across the miles through WebEx. So thanks thank so much. Guys. Have thanks a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for sticking with Happy us. Happy reading. Bye. Bye.